Anyone can beat Pokemon with their favorite team. Pokemon has always been a game of favorites. Well, I wanted to give the other Pokemon a chance to raise the Pokemon that have never had a trainer. But which six are going to make it as the most hated Pokemon? Well, let's find out. At the very beginning of our quest, we are faced with a decision, and I think Smoochum is perfect, as it evolves into one of, if not the most hated Pokemon in all of fandom. Our opponent's Bulbasaur lands a crit because of course, and that is a great start to this journey. Why is Jinx so hated in the Pokemon fandom though? In the fandom, she's accused of doing some blackface, and to be fair, kind of. Aside from that though, she gets a lot of hate for being too human-like, but when we compare this to the absolute love that Gardevoir gets, turns out we're fine with them being human so long as they're, um, Anyway, Jinx's episode in the original anime is actually one of the few American band episodes, and if you're more interested in that, you can click on a video that I'll put in the description. I plan to use her as a special striker. She'll know the moves Psychic, Fake Tears, Hail, and Ice Beam. She'll help us with stronger opponents, like Lance, for instance. I frolic over to Route 22 to get Spiro, which is pretty unliked, but he's actually not staying on the team. Viridian Forest takes two seconds, but then dun dun dun, we get to Brock. Luckily, I picked up Powdered Snow with my Smoochum, so his Geodude really isn't much of an issue. I go into the fight with Onyx, and he does a little bit of damage. The thing here is I can't really take a hit, so if I get hit with one Rock Tomb, I'm out of the match. Powdered Snow doesn't have quite enough power to take it out, but he misses his Rock Tomb, and I hit him with the Powdered Snow, clinching the victory and earning our first badge. Powdered Snow is also beefy enough to get us through the next few routes, as well as Mount Moon, with very, very few obstacles. Then Misty. Ugh. I had to grind here. Her Pokemon are faster, stronger, and honestly, Misty is usually my hardest fight, and this run would be no different. Getting all the way to level 26, I end up overpowering her finally, and I'm still barely able to beat her, but now that Smoochum is like 20 levels over the top, I sweep through Gary like a broom through Dust Tox. <laughs> And I catch Bill doing something, um, weird. A Rocket Grunt helps me get the least liked Pokemon in the game, officially. And we trade Spearow for our second Pokemon of the challenge. Spearow is not as liked, but Farfetch'd is a pariah. Farfetch'd main issue is his competition. He's going up against monsters like Dodrio and Pidgeot. Of course, people are going to choose those flying types over Farfetch'd. Combine that with the fact that in the anime, he does this. Farfetch'd. Farfetch'd. We keep getting more Pokemon. And you've got yourself an unloved Pokemon. Don't get me started on the fact that you would need to have a Spearow ready to trade for this thing. We're gonna put Fly on him as well as Cut, but we're also gonna give him Swords Dance and Slash. Because he comes equipped with a stick, his Slash is actually going to be pretty viable, especially against enemies with barriers. I take on Gary on the SS Anne, and Powder Snow and Confusion are his Kryptonite, and it helps that we're still pretty overleveled. Surge doesn't pose much of a challenge, yet his Raichu takes two hits surprisingly, and I get paralyzed, but I power through and take him out. We continue our journey and catch an actual Pokeball. Voltorb is the next Pokemon on on our journey. The main complaints here are that his design is a literal Pokeball, and his evolved form doesn't get much better. Other than that, he has some crazy speed and an okay special attack. I guess the other parts that suck are that he barely gets any mention in the anime, and the attacks he can learn on his own are just not great. I'm gonna use Voltorb as a Pokemon to run away, since his speed stat is gonna be huge. I'll have him set up light barriers, and in really tricky situations, I'll have him sacrifice himself with a self-destruct or explosion. It's at this point in the game I started to notice something. With this ragtag group of heroes, I found myself actually enjoying the game. Now, I know this might come as a duh, but this is actually a pretty well-rounded team. I wind up getting through Dark Tunnel and then face Erica, a pretty one-sided duel since Jinx is more than pulling her weight. Jinx gets paralyzed, but it's not the end of the world because, well, she's still overleveled. A Rocket Grunt helps me turn my Pokeball into an upside down Pokeball. I go to the very well hidden Game Quarter hideout and serve Giovanni the business. I pick up some Sylph and go to face my rival in the Pokemon Tower and give him the business. Now it's time to pick up our fourth team member. I grab a fishing pole and trespass to catch Goldeen. Goldeen stats are kind of garbage, and he's not even well known for being bad. He just gets forgotten. He has physical power, but water is a primarily special stat in this game, so without the defense to really back it up, he, he kind of sinks. Seeking in the anime, again, barely mentioned. I kind of plan on using him against specific opponents. He's gonna be the one to use Surf for us, and that's important, but he'll also be our man when it comes to Blaine. Aside from that, I don't plan on using him much in the Elite Four. I go to fight Koga because I have some fake tears and a confusion that doesn't miss. I manage to defeat the Ninja of Kanto. I'm able to learn Surf outside of battle, so I pick up our fifth team member. Tangela's stats are fine, but his design is just 
just a tangle of weeds. Most people aren't unmoved. The problem is that he seems untrustworthy, I guess? Combined with the fact that his competition is Vileplume and Victory Bell, and you can't find him until after you beat Koga, and you've found yourself a very hard pick. In the anime, he barely makes an appearance as well. His special attack is pretty decent, and he doesn't have the worst defenses, so he's gonna help us sweep Giovanni. He can also help us in some niche circumstances. I gotta go teach Giovanni who's boss again, but not before facing my rival, because I picked up some new team members, I'm actually starting to struggle, and need to use some strategies to beat these guys. But beat them, I do. Giovanni falls victim to a 10-year-old, and I pick myself up a Master Ball. I go teach Sabrina a lesson about the superior psychic Pokemon, and I just imagine she's mad she didn't have this Pokemon. There's only two gym lefts before I face the Elite Four, and I I don't even have a full team yet. I gotta go catch a gold duck, and I can't have him escaping on me, so I'll use this. I get the last member of my team in Mark the Lickitung. Oh, hi, Mark. Lickitung is hated for design and poor stats and poor move pools, and he's hardly attainable in the game. And when you compare him with Snorlax or Persian, he doesn't hold a candler. Plus, you have to give up a gold duck? He even kind of is not fun in the anime. He's going to use strength. That's how I'm gonna use him. I don't really plan on using him much more than that but he deserves a shot at being on the winning team for once. I do my least favorite dungeon, and then I fight Blaine, who goes down to my Sea King and little else. Then I go to the Sevi Islands, mainly for Bill's dummy go, and then I train up my Pokemon, who still are not ready for the Elite Four. I need to find Giovanni, because he still has some dignity, and beat him senseless with a setup on my Tangela. Then I go to face my rival, because he thinks he got stronger or something. Then I go to take on Victory Road for some much needed grinding. I get all my Pokemon to level 58, which is just below the level cap for the Elite Four, and I begin the challenge. I have a weird head cannon sometimes, but I like to think that the Elite Four get challenged all the time, and they scoff, because of course they can beat beat with Charizard or Jolteon or Gyarados. But when I show up with this reverse Pokeball, they'll be shocked. Lorelai doesn't take too much out of me. I do some setting up. Her Pokemon are all pretty beefy, but Charge is a godsend. That and a light screen, so I don't take too much stupid damage from Surf. Her Jinx is a problem, but I explode and defeat her. I heal up, face Bruno, starting off with our boy Seeking. I've never had much trouble with Bruno, but this time is a little different, because I'm playing on set and his Pokemon are largely faster than mine. I resort to using Water Pulse Confusion tactics, which don't really work out for Hitmonchan, but he doesn't hit us with a nice rock too. We surf and get him out of the way. Next up is Hitmonlee. Again, we're gonna try straight for those Water Pulse techniques, and with Hitmonlee, it really works. It works so well that I thought I was gonna have to use another surf here, but he just hurt himself into oblivion. I thought I would try the water pulse technique once again, but my champ cross chopped our seeking into some sushi. I sent out Farfetch'd and I used Fly, but lo and behold I miss, so I use Fly again, and I miss again. Three times the charm, I finally fly up into the air and hit my champ with a critical hit. I thought about keeping my Farfetch'd in and trying to use Stretch, but I decided against it and just throw in Tangela for the win against Bruno. Agatha, the ghost type trainer. <clears throat> actually goes down to just my Jinx and a powerful psychic move for each one of her Pokemon. At this point, my Jinx is pretty awesome in the special attack category. And then Lance. You know, he used to give me a lot of problems as a kid, but thanks to some hail and great non-death from ancient power, the flying type Elite Four member actually goes down. The champion is up next, and once again, I'm reminded that some of these Pokemon may have never been at this point, and certainly not on the same team. I'm proud of them. They helped me get this far, and... I actually had a lot of fun doing this. It's the first time I've had fun playing Pokemon in a long time. I take on Aaron, named after my first subscriber, and start getting to work. You've watched this challenge at breakneck speeds, but these Pokemon have fought long and hard to be here, so let's watch this last battle of theirs as unedited as possible so you can see how they work together and what kind of team can be assembled even from the underdogs of the Pokemon world.
put your hands together for the winning team of this Pokemon challenge. They deserve and they have earned their time in the spotlight. So let's let them soak it in for a second. I use some tips and tricks to help me in this playthrough. So if you're interested in that, go ahead and click on this video here.